will desperate times call for drastic measures. I would like to take your dogs away and give them to people who have the time that they need. The final stop is Sarah's bedroom, where she keeps Nibby and Maiden confined during the day. Maiden likes to poop underneath the bed, so I don't know what it is. She has something with going maybe in private. <gasps> yeah. I cannot believe what I saw. I don't think I have ever seen such a disgusting sight as weak old poop and piles of it under somebody's bed. I don't know how she sleeps. So you have poop under your bed, the bed you sleep in. Yeah, you have poop it's under. disgusting. And so you leave it. It's just so hard to clean, and I'm gone all the time. Sarah will let her dogs stay in the room up to 12 hours in a day, won't walk them at all. Maybe she's too tired. Next, Sarah takes Victoria out to her private balcony. All the big spots are throw up because I changed their food and they got really sick a couple days ago. I think Sarah's the worst dog owner that has ever existed. She neglects her dogs. She's lazy. She must have given Maiden no form of discipline whatsoever, no form of training. Dogs th threw up, mm -hmm. oh, but you left it here. Yeah, it was, I think I was working like, yeah, I was working really late and I came home and they were, it was all over here. And that I was three it. days ago, why is it still on here? I haven't cleaned it. It wasn't just crusty poop that hadn't been picked up. It was crusty vomit. Making matters even worse for Sarah is her dog Nibby's aggression. I brought my friend Maddie over um, just to show Victoria how Nibby acts towards guests and friends. So if you tried to stroke her, what yes. would she do? She would, you, you'd see her coming in and then she'd growl and then just nip. How many times has she bitten you then? Once every time I've come over. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'd just come in and be like, see? Okay. I have every confidence that Nibby can become more confident around people, but it's gonna take every effort from Sarah, and I don't think she's capable of doing anything at the moment. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Goodbye. Goodbye. See you. The irresponsibility that you're showing towards your dogs and towards your fellow house members is quite disgusting, and I'm appalled. And you know what? I would also like to take your dogs away from you and give them to people who have the time and attention that they need and the filth that they have to live in, especially your dogs in your room, Sarah. I've never seen a room like that. And it's a health hazard not just for your dogs, but it's a health hazard for you. Nibby's already bitten, and she's gonna continue to bite and bite and bite. And one day, somebody's gonna come in here, and that bite is gonna be a liability. So we need to get that under control. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I've got somebody that I want you to meet. So Victoria has brought in a professional to show the girls the serious health hazards they are facing. Greg is an environmental consultant, and he specializes in bacteria and molds. And I thought it was really important that he come and he actually do a test, especially your room. And I wanted to tackle your room, Sarah. Greg is going to inspect my room, and I'm really nervous. Greg collects samples from three areas. The comforter, Sarah's pillow, and the wretched underbelly of her bed. First impression is uh, overexposure to fecal matter. I'm very concerned uh, because there's so much waste, there's so much dust, it makes me think it's been there for quite some time. Now, Greg gives the girls his initial assessment. So uh, my, my thoughts for the room that I sampled is that uh, until we get back results from the lab, that you not be in that room, okay. that you not take clothing out of that room and use the clothing, and that you shut the door and put some masking tape over the door. Okay. Wow, this is serious. My concern about E. coli is that if you do show symptoms, treatment for E. coli can damage your kidney, as well as high blood pressure and, and diseases like that that don't go away. I had no idea things were that out of control in my room. And roundworm, if you ingest it, can affect your brain. But the other thing is that the dogs with their four paws and their furry sides, they're gonna lie down, they're gonna have an exposure to, to that dog feces probably higher than your exposure. So it could be all over the furniture, too. It could be. 
shocked all of us. Kind of grossed out by it and afraid for the safety of everybody in the house. Thank you, Greg. Okay, it's thank you really, very much. Really nice interesting. To Great to meet thank you. you. Thank you. Have a good day. Greg coming over and taking samples and all of that is very eye-opening. Bye. Next, Victoria has Sarah tackle the upstairs while the other two girls work on the living room. It smelled pretty bad up there and it definitely took, you know, a lot of elbow grease to get all the throw up off the patio. An hour later, Victoria comes up to see how Sarah's doing. <gasps> wow. It looks beautiful. It's wonderful. Oh my gosh, this is, this is your place. I love it. I learned my lesson. <laughs> I'll just say that. Okay. Yeah. Don't let it get like that <laughs> <Yeah>. again. <laughs> no. Now, the test results are in. I am very concerned with the amount of feces that there are lying around, especially in Sarah's room. I think it could be a potential health hazard. I have the results. I'm very scared about, you know, the samples coming back and what could be in the house for everyone. And uh, fortunately, it's good news. There is no E. coli present Yay. in your room. <laughs> Thank goodness. I hope this near miss has been a wake up call for all of the girls. I hope they never, ever let the house get to the state that it was when I first came here. This is the dog's own personal potty. I love it. But what I've done is I've put a little of uh, one of their poopies on there anyway, mm -hmm. so that their scent is, is on there. Hopefully that will entice them when they need to go, yeah. to go in there. <gasps> now, she wants to address Sarah's dog Nibby's most serious problem. Nibby has found a great way to deal with the people that come and try and touch her, and that's to bite them and it works. It makes people go away from her. So she's gonna do it again and again and again. What we want to teach her now is that approaching hands are a good thing rather than a bad thing. And the way I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna teach her the touch command. Dogs are very inquisitive anyway, and they like to go towards things. Ooh, fascinating, let's go check it out. And when she does, she gets a treat. When you stimulate appetite, that changes the way the brain reacts and therefore the way the dog feels. Good girl. As she goes towards touch to touch my hand, I tell her to touch. Touch. Now, when she doesn't do it, she's working out. She's not gonna get a treat until she does it. So let's just see. If she doesn't do it for a while, what I'll do is I'll put my hand back and, and give it to her again and see what she does. Touch. Good girl. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna start standing. I'm gonna walk around a little bit. Touch. Good girl. Okay, Susan, would you like a go? <laughs> uh, I think Susan was really nervous when she found out she had to be working with Nibby. I know she's been bit before and was probably really scared about it. Touch. When you, she doesn't do it, just go, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Touch. Beautiful. Good girl. I think that was the first time she's ever made a positive connection with this dog. Touch. Good, Good girl. I think that by working with Nibby, I probably showed Sarah that I do care. I have a bit of a softer side when it comes to her dogs, and I think it'll help our relationship. Then Victoria moves the training to Sarah's lap, a place where Nibby feels very protective. So now I'm, I'm conditioning her to see my approach. Hi, Sarah, touch. Good girl. I want Sarah to teach her guests to do what I did, to approach her, say, hi, Sarah, and then say, touch. Extend their hands so Nibby can touch them and, they, and she can get a treat. Hey, Sarah, touch. Good girl. Watching Nibby learn, I just, I love it. It's, it's really amazing. So far, everything is coming together well. Accidents in the house have become less frequent, and all the dogs have now taken to the porch potty. The porch potty is going great. Um, Maiden is a whiz at it. Even Lucas and Bailey know to go out there now, too. Sarah has taken the cleaning in her room to the next level by getting her mattress professionally cleaned. That's pretty gross. And to prevent any more hard-to-reach messes, 
Sarah has also blocked access under her bed. I taped blackboard under my bed so Maiden can't get under there anymore and there won't be any more mess. Maddie! Hello. Next, Sarah has invited her friend over to work with Nibby on the touch training. Nibby usually bites me and uh, I'm not too sure if uh, she'll bite me again. So I feel still a little scared, still feel nervous. You're gonna have a treat. You're gonna hold it behind your back and you're gonna open your hand and you're gonna say touch. And if she touches you with her nose and you give her the treat and say, good girl. Okay. Maybe, maybe. Touch. There you go. Wow. Okay, one more time. Maybe. Touch. Good girl. Wow, that's completely night and day. Good girl. She wouldn't even come to me before. Good girl. That whole touch training worked really well, and I was really impressed, really amazed. Come here. Oh, good oh, girl. You can sit with me. We're going to play now. Nibby is making so much progress. By inviting her to touch, you're taking pressure off her so she's less likely to react and bite.